Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pennsylvania Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. I'd like to thank you all for joining us here today. Just a few housekeeping items before we do get started. There is a Q&A button feature at the bottom of your screen, which you can use to enter in questions at any time during the session to our presenters. If you do have a question for a specific college, be sure to mention that college within your question. Your camera and microphone are turned off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is also just one of many sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional ones as well. The presentation is also being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same site where you registered. Now, without further ado, I'll turn it over to our first school, which is the University of Tampa. Hello, everyone. Um, I am Faith Sanders with the University of Tampa. I'm primarily servicing students from your area, of course, Pennsylvania um, and Kentucky. Uh, so if I have any stragglers, feel free, feel free to um, list questions. Um, but as far as UT goes, um, I'm also a proud graduate. So um, I'll give you like my own personal insight while I go through this slide. Um, just along with like getting you acclimated to our culture. So give me one second to screen share. And can you all see the University of Tampa? Um, my counselors will help me out. Yes, we can. Awesome, okay, perfect. So let's get started. Um, so just um, scoping out the area. So just from my personal background and as far as like why I chose UT, um, I liked how central it was to um, pretty much everywhere. So if you are coming down to kind of like uh, scope out the University of Tampa, you're typically taking like a full Flor Florida tour. Um, and it's very easy to accomplish if you start from Tampa. Um, Orlando is not too far from us. Um, it's nice because it is an attraction, but also just um, an immediate big city um, in our immediate proximity. Um, as far as in along with like getting down to Miami, only about like three and a half hours, um, any type of trip, um, it's a very central location and it is very ideal um, as a student um, or a young professional. Um, as far as the Tampa Bay area goes, um, so when you guys do visit, if you guys have visited, um, you'll notice that there are like three main cities um, when people discuss the Tampa Bay area. It's Clearwater, Tampa, and St. Pete. Um, those are our two beach cities. St. Pete's a lot closer, uh, maybe like a 20 minute drive. Um, while Clearwater is the number one beach, um, or was the number one beach, I think we lost to another floor, or we lost to St. Pete this year. Um, so St. Pete's the number one beach, uh, according to the TripAdvisor this year, uh, but Clearwater is definitely our, our fan favorite. Um, here's a quick glance at Clearwater, uh, nice beach, uh, nice uh, beach culture, um, as far as like live music and, and nice places to eat. Um, and you don't have to get in the water to have a good time. Several times that I went here to just kind of decompress, do my homework, catch a sunrise or a sunset. Um, and again, only about like 40 minutes away. So um, additional things you'll do as a student are um, engage in the uh, professional sports in our um, in our area um, and go to the games. We get discounted tickets, like $15 tickets as a UT student um, to go to any of the professional sports events. Um, you guys know that the Bucks just won, so it should be an exciting uh, year next year. The, the Bolts are also a very good team. Um, won the Stanley Cup, Stanley Cup not too long ago and the Rays just went to the World Series. Um, so an exciting time um, to be in Tampa in general. Um, and you'll feel that culture if you do choose to visit. Um, but as far as our feel um, and who we are, uh, so we are in the center of downtown. Um, however, we do have a closed campus. So you cannot get from point A to point B from driving through our campus. Um, one of our borders is this, uh, the Hillsborough River also leads to the Tampa Bay, of course, the beach, um, of course. Uh, but several times, just my personal experience, hammocking here, we have a hammock club uh, that actually like does their homework in hammocks and trees. So uh, kind of unique, but definitely a campus feel. Um, while you are on campus, it will slip your mind that you are downtown, um, you'll see faces from everywhere. So only 20% um, of our students are out of state. 70% um, of our students are in state or 70% 70 70 of our students are out of state, forgive me, and 20% are in state. Um, so not a heavily concentrated Floridian school. Um, also 10% international. So um, although that does sound small, definitely uh, several international faces at the University of Tampa um, represented in all states and 138 countries if we are being exact. Um, and then as far as like the, the student who fits uh, metropolitan, I've taken that term to mean like, honestly open-minded. Uh, you'll need like cross-cultural collaboration. Um, that, that skill, uh, you may bring it to UT, but you'll definitely acquire it from attending the University of Tampa as well. Um, active, you'll actively engage on campus. We have 300 plus clubs and organizations, um, but you'll also actively engage as a professional. Um, walking downtown, we have internships within walking distance. Um, those, those, those internships downtown are primarily occupied by University of Tampa students. Um, there's no other university within like a 13 mile radius of us. 
Um, and then independent. So you will need to be able to have a home away from home. Um, our average student travels about a thousand miles to attend the University of Tampa. I'm from Cleveland myself. Um, a little bit of, ba of background in, in um, Pennsylvania as well, but um, I am this, the child who chose to go um, to school far away from home. And I can't say that my other siblings um, would have been comfortable. So it definitely takes a certain student. Um, as far as just the academics go, I told you guys I transferred as well. I'm transferred from a much larger school. So if you were kind of trying to gauge your classroom experience, um, typically at a larger school, you will struggle um, getting to know your professor on a, um, a personal basis. Um, your professor, at least in my experience at UT, uh, they knew my name, they knew my strengths and weaknesses uh, were available. Um, our professors were actually just re recently mentioned in the Princeton Review um, for their availability um, and how they vouched on students' behalf to make sure that they are um, reaching their future goals. Um, also take pride in what they do. Um, almost all of them have their PhDs. You'll never be taught by a teacher assistant at the University of Tampa. Um, and then as far as who we are um, in the grand scheme, um, you guys may know us uh, or know the coalition as an application, uh, but it's also an organization. Uh, we graduate our students with less loan debt, uh, graduate you within four years more often than other institutions, um, and introduce you to social and ethnic diversity by attending our institution. Um, and again, it is invite only. So it's not that we apply to be a part of that coalition or organization. Um, liberal arts school, so you will have to complete our baccalaureate experience. Um, the grand idea is for you to be a well-versed student um, and be able to um, speak on multiple topics comfortably um, by the time that you graduate the University of Tampa. Do have an honors program as well. Um, a couple perks, um, and you will be admitted if you do have these qualifications upon the, the time of your acceptance. Um, but the Oxford semester, uh, you get to study at Oxford for uh, the same cost as UT. Um, there is an honors house, first year housing. Um, but then as far as uh, experiential education, uh, you'll definitely take your major on in a very experiential way. Here are a few examples, um, and I'll just click through them because I know I'm limited on time, um, but state-of-the-art equipment across the board. Um, and then as far as just new innovations, we have the Furman Center for the Arts. Um, mentioned internships, so I won't spend too much time there. Uh, studying abroad is what we pride ourselves on, internships and studying abroad. Um, and then as far as the housing goes, um, apartment style, no communal restrooms, um, and living on campus is not mandated. Um, always felt safe. Campus safety officers have served in the police force or military force. Um, and then these are just some kind of employment options. And my computer is freezing on me, sorry about that. Um, a D2 school, um, past this, so I'm going to skip through this as well. Um, and then this is all we'll need from you. So for the coming years, um, and I'll just skip through these because I know I'm kind of getting limited on time, um, but for the coming years, we will be test optional um, through spring 2023. And we are a uh, in-state and out-of-state tuition um, at the University of Tampa is going to be the same. Um, and we do accept, uh, our, or forgive me, uh, military bills um, as far as cutting the cost for tuition as well. And here are our social media tags. And that's it. That's all I have for you guys. I know that I kind of ran over. Sorry about that. Thank you so much for your presentation. Up next, we have Hartwick College. Hi there. Thank you guys so much for your time today. Uh, for me, I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'm going to show you all two videos that we have and that I love sharing with everybody. And as long as I can do technology correctly. Okay. So to introduce ourselves, um, well, my name is Shana Popo. I'm a senior assistant director from Hartwick College, and I as well am an alumni. I graduated right in 2017, born and raised from New York itself. Um, Oneonta, or excuse me, Hartwick College is in Oneonta, New York. It's nestled right in on the side of the mountain. We have a vibrant campus community that really fosters belonging. You will find your place and your people here at Hartwick. With our beautiful location and the vibrant living spaces, it's very easy to feel at home on campus and even in the city squares. So, and with that, you know, as a hawk, you'll discover that it's easy to get involved, making friends comes naturally, and everyone that's here on campus, faculty, staff, and even your classmates are all rooting for your success. So, with that. It all starts on this hill. This is where belonging means being. Exactly who you are and who you'll become. 
It's where belonging means believing. You'll find the courage to surprise others, especially yourself. This is where you'll find your passion and purpose. video that I love to share. Those are our real students, students who I've worked with daily as soon as I graduated. And I would like to say that the campus is exactly the same as when I was in classes, but we have renovated and had multiple, multiple renovations across campus. Um, so a lot of the labs and a lot of our classrooms are very new as well as our residential buildings. And with that, the second video I would love to share is about our distinctive offer flight path, which is for every single student that we have. You receive a dedicated guidance team, future focused education, personal mentorship, and an immersive career opportunities. And the real thing that makes it so special is that you gain the real world work experience early and as often that it builds your confidence. So that way, when you're ready to leave Hartwick and take that next step, your confidence will be soaring. So here is that second video and hopefully you guys can see it okay. This is your flight path. It's a new approach designed just for you. At Hartwick College, your education includes everything. It's where friends become family, clubs become communities, games are filled with true blue spirit, campus becomes a second home and college creates lifelong memories. It's your journey that we'll take together where every milestone builds towards your success. Let's begin. We'll start by learning more about you because this is an experience made for you. You'll discover your natural strengths and what energizes you so that you can explore majors, make connections, and tap into what's happening on campus. As a hawk, you'll benefit from a personal guidance team that works with you to manage it all, including a success coach, a career coach, a faculty advisor, and an alumni mentor who will help you every step of the way. You'll take a seminar that'll help you set goals and understand your flight path. Next, you'll gain critical 21st century skills four weeks at a time. Finally, you'll get to know your classmates even better by collaborating in special group projects both on and off campus. You'll learn what it takes to grow in your career and how to network during a two-day professional conference. You'll make meaningful connections right here, right now, with alumni that work all over the country, finding mentors, landing internships, and taking full advantage of the Hawk Alumni Network. Every opportunity expands on what you've learned about yourself and your options. You'll have work experiences from clinicals and student teaching to research, always finding new ways to set yourself up for what's next. All throughout your time at Hartwick, you'll find yourself at home in the heart of long-standing traditions, lasting friendships, and everything college is meant to be. You'll become more confident in yourself, more equipped for an ever-changing world, and you'll capture it all in a digital resume so that you can show exactly what you're made of. Every step of your flight path builds towards your success. Your first year defines your path and builds a strong foundation. Your second year helps you become more professional and career ready. Your third year gives you real-world work experience. And in your final year, you'll reflect on what you've learned throughout all of your experiences and what that means for your future in a distinctive senior capstone. When you graduate, you'll be ready. And together, with every hawk beside you and the network of hawks around the world, you'll be ready to soar. So I am going to stop the video there just because this is my absolute favorite view of the city of Oneonta. This is the main center of our campus and what our students walk past every single day. And lastly, the only thing I do want to mention is on our website, you are welcome to sign up for an in-person visit. Uh, we have it for single individual families, so it's very safe and we do monitor and so on and so forth. So any questions at all time, we're always here. Thank you so much for giving us that presentation. As a reminder to our participants, if you do have questions for any of the colleges you're seeing today, definitely don't hesitate to drop those into the Q&A down below. 
Up next, we have Gettysburg College. Hello, everyone, and welcome Pennsylvania and to those coming in from outside Pennsylvania. My name is Mary Smith. I'm one of the senior associate directors from the Gettysburg College Admissions Office. And I'd love to tell you a little bit about Gettysburg today. I understand we have some students joining us, some parents joining us. And if you're like me, I love to be um, more tactile in my learning. Um, so I am throwing a bunch of different links into our chat. So you'll see a video, some fast facts and my contact information all there. So, but without further ado, Gettysburg College is a nationally ranked, historic, highly selective college of the liberal arts and sciences, as you might imagine, located in the heart of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. It's kind of a nice key location being about an hour and a half north of Washington, DC. Many Pennsylvania residents know us as being in Gettysburg, but we're actually 20 minutes north of the Maryland border. So wonderful opportunities for career immersion, for hands-on learning experiences, for opportunities um, for students to be able to get a career immersion experiences. And Clarissa just let me know that it needs to go to everyone. So there's our links. Thank you so much, Clarissa. <laughs> so now those links are posted. Um, but we have over 120 clubs and organizations. And frankly, the typical Gettysburg College students get very involved. They get involved in leadership opportunities. They get involved in the community around us. The Center for Public Service organizes a lot of different opportunities. As you'll see in the center of this slide, that is through our painted turtle farm, where we have an organic garden on our campus and a CSA. I think my favorite picture on this slide is this bottom right one here that is illustrates our first year walk. Being in a historic town, something we do every year as a part of our traditions is all of our first year students, they close off the town, the townspeople are cheering them on and they walk up to the National Cemetery and hear a reading of the Gettysburg Address. We talk a lot about what it means to be in a place that changed the course of our nation's history. And part of that ethos and experience is how will you change history? And we ask that question quite a bit of our students, both in our research work that we do, all the hands-on experiences that we do, as well as through our academic experiences. We are a residential campus, and most students will live on campus all four years. Although for a huge part of them, about 60% will actually study abroad, so they actually won't be on campus for that semester. This slide illustrates a little bit of those unique programs at Gettysburg. Our Eisenhower Institute for Public Policy and Leadership is a public policy program, but it overlaps with environmental studies, business, finance, politics, you name it. Public policy affects everything we do. And we have offices a block from the White House, right in DC, as well as on our campus. We're the only school in the country <laughs> that has a presidential legacy organization as a part of our undergraduate experience. And all students can take advantage of it. One of the reasons I came to Gettysburg back in the 90s when I was a student is this bottom right highlight. Our Sunderman Conservatory of Music is a wonderful opportunity for students both planning to major or minor in music or who frankly just want to participate. About one in seven of our students are involved in music on our campus. We do have a marching band, only school in our conference to claim that in the Centennial Conference. There are over 65 different academic majors and courses of study. Some of our most popular ones are political science, as you might imagine, being so close to Washington. Business is huge for us and actually one of our number one areas for our alumni. Economics, we have a new data science minor. I'll actually scroll to that slide. Our new data science minor is becoming more and more popular as students want to couple that with education or couple that with public policy or couple that with business. A lot of different ways you can put those things together. But that new international and globalization studies major also highlights the fact that so many of our students go abroad, that we've seen such an increase in interest in the globalization piece. Our students truly are global citizens. We have students from all over the country and all over the globe, and they're able to explore that through study abroad experiences, through hands-on research, both domestically and abroad, and as I said, internships, career-related immersion experiences, we pride ourselves on that hands-on learning. We also do have an honor code, and we have a lot of pride in that over 50-year-old honor code. We have a sense of integrity that really filters through the campus environment. It means you can 
leave your laptop, although I don't recommend this, but students do it all the time. Our library is 24 hours. They'll leave their laptop, come back to it. It's still there. It's part of the place, part of the trust, if you will, the mutual respect and responsibility on our campus. And I'll just highlight two other things on this slide. We have a new anatomage table, virtual dissection lab. Great opportunity there for students uh, to have hands-on research who are interested in the medical field. A lot of our pre-med students are using that tool. And we have a new Eisenhower scholarship, as you might guess, tied into our connection with President Eisenhower. But it is a $40,000 scholarship that is uh, a civic engagement scholarship for students with a short essay. Last but not least, merit scholarships, what we look for in the application, it's all illustrated there. We do have wonderful scholarships and need-based financial aid, as well as a STEM scholarship and music scholarships through the audition process. Our students are very active in all different ways, shapes, and forms, and they are in a rigorous classroom environment. So we're looking for that coming from the high school environment, and we get to know all of your schools, both across the state of Pennsylvania, as well as across the country. So we're looking at it within the context of your school, and we expect that at Gettysburg as well. And then there's me. So if you have additional questions, I'll once again share those links. So they're top of the page, but my name is Mary. Feel free to reach out to me, and I handle all, a lot of the Pennsylvania schools as well. Thanks so much, and have a good rest of your day. Thank you so much for that presentation. Up next, we have Beloit College. All right, uh, so my name is Liam Daly. Uh, I'm a Regional Associate Director of Admissions for the Beloit College Admissions Office. I work out of Boston and Massachusetts, and I work with students from up and down the East Coast, including Pennsylvania. So if you decide to apply to Beloit next year, or maybe the year after that, uh, I'd be the person uh, doing your interview, reading your application, all that good stuff. So it's a real pleasure on my end to get to know the students uh, this early on in the process. So I'm thrilled to meet all of you today as close as we can call this to meeting and really honored to be presenting with these other great five schools. So uh, Beloit College is located in the city of Beloit in Wisconsin. So we're in the uh, right on the southern border of Wisconsin next to Illinois. So be a bit of a bit of a drive for most of you, probably about 12 ish hours, depending on where you're at in Pennsylvania, but a very quick flight. Um, probably out to O'Hare just outside of Chicago and then we're just a little over an hour from O'Hare so we run buses back and forth and you come to the city of Beloit which has about 40,000 people living there it's a great little college town uh, tacos and Indian food and uh, we have an international film festival and a farmer's market and um, all sorts of cool stuff uh, really good hot sauce if you like hot sauce uh, Bushel and Peck's hot sauce will happily uh, ship you out some some of their unique hot sauces to Pennsylvania for you to try out um, and Beloit College itself is a liberal arts college. And I just wanna talk briefly about some of the sort of core ideas that we're focused on as you can read some of these facts. So uh, first we're really committed to the idea that you should not have to be a humanities student or a science student. Uh, you should be able to be a humanities and a science student. And we actually think that you know, the, the bulk of the issues that the world is grappling with today require you to have that broad understanding of a variety of different disciplines and perspectives. We think that you as the student should be at the center of your educational experience and that hands-on work uh, and uh, hands-on opportunities should not be something that you have to seek out, uh, that you maybe get the opportunity to do in your senior year or your junior year, but something that uh, sort of around every corner you have the opportunity to uh, do research, to collaborate with faculty, to get off campus and work in the community. Uh, those are opportunities that our students have from day one and have no matter what they're studying, um, no matter uh, what their experiences have been, that's a huge part of what we do. We think the college should be challenging, um, but we're also in the Midwest. We're a little more laid back than some of the folks that I know and work with on the East Coast all the time. So we also think college should be fun. It should be exciting. It should be a really um, amazing time of exploration and self-growth. Uh, and you should have the opportunity to do everything that you wanna do in college. You shouldn't have to choose and let go of things that matter to you. Uh, and in order for all of that to be possible, uh, it has to be a really uh, accepting and supportive and diverse community that you're a part of in college. So it's really important to us that we see you for who you are, uh, support you for who you are and lift you up um, rather than trying to turn you into someone else. And finally, we believe that you shouldn't have to choose to sacrifice um, elements of your college experience or particular things that you wanna study in order to be successful after college. Uh, we think it's our job to make sure that we're setting you up for success post-college. 
you should get to have the college experience that you want to have. So we were voted uh, the top five most innovative liberal arts college uh, this past year, which we're really proud of. And I wanna talk about two of our most innovative, uh, relatively new programs. The first one is our advanced mentoring program. So with this program, if you were next year to apply to Beloit, get into Beloit and decide you wanna come, and you told me today that you were coming to Beloit and you signed on the dotted line and, and submitted your deposit and all of that good stuff, by Thursday, we would have introduced you to your faculty advisor, all right? So that's somebody that in most schools, you're not gonna to get to meet until September. Uh, we feel like if you tell us you're coming, you're a Beloiter, you're ready to go, we're gonna get started and we're gonna immediately introduce you to the faculty and start planning for your success. And that advising goes all the way through all four years. We've also added programs called career channels, which allow you to connect the issues that you're most, most passionate about with both your major and with your goals for, uh, for work afterwards. So you could be a, uh, a arts student who's particularly interested in justice and rights and goes to the justice and rights career channel for support and thinking about how you can use your work as an artist to have a positive impact on justice and rights issues after graduation. I think if you were to take away two things from this presentation about the Beloit community and, and who Beloit students are, I would want you to remember that one, Beloit students are uh, heavily involved and do a lot of different stuff and we make the space for them to do that. So the typical Beloiter is a, a pitcher on the softball team and is a member of student government and uh, lives in one of our sorority houses and volunteers in the local uh, elementary school system on the weekends, as well as of course being a chemistry major, right? So we wanna make space for you to have all of those experiences, um, not limited to one or two. And our student body uh, is also really committed to having a positive impact in the world. Um, so if you talk to Beloit students about what matters to them and what they're doing on campus, you're going to hear a lot of, I'm doing this in order to change this. I'm doing this in order to support these people. I'm doing this in order to make sure that these types of people have an opportunity that they don't have yet. So if you're somebody who wants to make a difference in the world, we make the space for that as well. Um, we've had most of our students on campus all year this year, and knock on wood, that's gone really well. And one of the main reasons that we've been able to do that successfully is that we got our students to write the guidelines for how to make a, a safe return to campus. Uh, and lastly, I'll just leave this admission slide up here for one moment. Um, wanna touch on holistic review. Holistic review means that uh, we're not just gonna admit you or not admit you based off of your GPA or based off of your test scores. We wanna look at everything you send us, your essay and your letters of recommendation, the activities you're involved in, put all of that in together and try and make it a determination if this is the right fit for you. And if it is, we'd really love to have you. So very much appreciate your time today. I'll put my email in the chat um, once we get out of here um, and would love to hear questions from you either now in the Q&A box or later on. You're welcome to email me anytime. Thanks so much. Thank you very much for that presentation. As a final reminder to our participants, if you do have questions, we're here to answer them. So definitely don't hesitate to put those questions down in the Q&A below. Up next, we have Loyola, Loyola University, Maryland. Hi everyone, I'm gonna share my screen with you all. Um, so we are at Loyola University of Maryland. My name is Zoe Derrickson. I am an admission counselor here. Um, I recruit our folks from Pennsylvania, Maryland, New Jersey, and Delaware. Um, I'm just gonna throw information in the chat for you all, um, as well as our view book. Um, but Loyola University of Maryland is a private Jesuit liberal arts university located in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, we're about, um, 85 miles north of Baltimore's Inner Harbor, and we really offer the best of both worlds. Um, so when it comes to um, our campus being distinct from our city, um, yet provides easy access to internship, job opportunities, cultural experiences, and events. Um, being a part of the Baltimore, Washington, D.C. Metro, um, we're about the fourth largest metropolitan area in the U.S., um, about 45 minutes from D.C., an hour and a half from Philly, three hours from New York, so really centrally located on the East Coast. Um, I like to say everything is a plane, train, or bus ride away. And then Baltimore is really a college town. We have about 160,000 college students across 13 different universities. Um, so that's really nice in that you're always gonna be around a youthful population. Um, about 30% of our students actually stay in the Baltimore DC area after graduation. That's not because we trap you here. That's really because you're really taking up roots, um, networking opportunities. Um, about 80% of our students have internship, research, practicum experience, uh, mostly getting that involved 
Baltimore, where you're able to take an internship um, course for credit. Um, so two burns, one stone with that. Um, it's really nice and a lot of students partake in that. Um, so like Baltimore, Loyola is super diverse in terms of student experiences, uh, viewpoints, backgrounds. We have approximately 3,900 undergrad students from over 40 different states, 40 countries, six continents. Um, only 18% of our students are from Maryland. Um, if we look at the last year's class, we had 1,000 students, 30% identified as students of color, 70% um, were out of state, and then 18% were Pell eligible. If we look at our student life, um, we have 17 different residence halls. Um, they really combine the comfort and convenience um, of our community. We're always ranked in the top 10. 98% of our first year students live on campus and then 85 all four years. Um, so we continually look to link our residence hall experience with our academic experience for our students. Um, speaking of academics, we really talk to experience, accessibility, relationships, and outcomes. Those are going to be giving you a competitive edge. Um, we have an average class size of about 20 students and a student faculty ratio of 12 to 1. 100% of your classes are going to be taught by Loyola faculty. Um, we do offer three different pre professional tracks, including pre health, pre law, um, and pre med. In each of those different programs, we beat the national acceptance rate by about 25 to 35 points. Um, we do offer 35 different majors and 45 different minors. We really encourage interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary studies. Um, most of the popular majors include biology, psychology, political science, anything within our business school, um, as well as speech language hearing sciences. Um, our College of Arts and Sciences is our biggest um, school with 62%, um, then the School of Education. Um, within that school, about 90% of our students launch their careers directly after graduating. Um, the 10% really includes people who want to continue graduate programs um, for any specialized degrees. Um, Selinger School of Business Management is around 33% of our student population. We are AACSB um, accredited, which is only the top 10, um, sorry, top 5% of business schools worldwide. Um, we do have 20% of our um, first year students are undeclared, um, but just going back to outcomes, 98% of our students are employed within um, six months of graduation. So either in graduate school, professional school, um, or full-time service. So that really speaks to um, those unique relationships with faculty members. If you're a numbers person, um, the average starting salary is 54,150. Um, so that's a great way to start off your professional career. Um, I would say outside of academics, um, our philosophy really speaks to being um, professionally and socially involved on campus and being part of our vibrant community. We have 18 different D1 teams, 25 club sports, 12 variant murals, um, about 40 different outdoor experience trips. So a lot of ways to get involved, whether that's being a member or being a leader, um, about 200 different student organizations and 500 different events. Um, we encourage students also bring new organizations um, when they come and graduate from high school. Um, we really want to encourage those different missions. Um, a lot of students pair their academic major with their um, club, but they absolutely do not have to. Um, two other things I'd like to speak to are community service. So two out of three students participate in some type of community service. Again, whether that's aligned with your major or you really love tutoring. Um, being in Baltimore, we have about 50 different for-profits and nonprofits for you all to get involved in. And then I know it's weird to talk about, but study abroad. Um, more than 60% of our students study abroad in over 60 different um, opportunities in over 20 different countries. Um, most students go abroad their junior year, usually for a single semester, but we do have full year summer and holiday tours. Every single major is able to go abroad. Um, so that's really nice, especially um, given that you could be a biology, history, communications major and have that international experience. Um, like to talk a little bit about application. Um, so we are a member of the Common App School, makes it really easy to apply to us. Um, you can see a little bit more information there in terms of class profile. And then of course, we do have in-person tours as well as virtual events and visit experiences, which I linked um, above, so feel free to check that out. Thank you so much. Thank you for that presentation. Our final college for this session is Purdue University.
Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, hopefully you all are hanging in there um, with, I know it's a lot of information in a little short of time. Um, so my name is Brenda Ramirez and I am currently an assistant director of admissions with Purdue University. Um, so with that, we can kind of get right into it. Um, so Purdue is on the larger side. As an institution, we have just under 35,000 undergraduate students on our campus. Um, and although we are a public state university within the state of Indiana, we do serve students not only from the state of Indiana, but all over the world. Um, so we have a pretty diverse population on campus. Um, we have every single state represented. Um, and like I said, we have one of the largest international student populations as well. So when it comes to kind of the campus environment, uh, Purdue, again, is located in West Lafayette. So it's about two hours south of Chicago and about an hour north of Indianapolis. And so even though we are what you would consider more of a suburban um, area, we are pretty close to two large metropolitan areas and we're pretty accessible. The other thing I like to know is that um, there's also a lot of things to do while you're on campus, both within the campus area, but then also in the neighboring town of Lafayette, Indiana. So as you can see from the pictures on this slide, we do have several programs that both uh, student organizations put on as well as the university, such as a farmer's market that comes to campus during the fall and spring semesters, as well as festivals and music concerts. Um, and students can also take advantage of the local restaurants and shops around the area. With that, we also have um, nearly 1,000 different organizations. So if I get, again, there is always something to do. There's something for everyone on our campus. We do find that a lot of students love getting involved right away. Um, we have a Be Involved here that takes place um, every fall. And so students can kind of find out about the different organizations um, to get involved with. Um, just some of the ones that I like to mention is if you know if you're musically inclined, whether you like to sing or maybe you play an instrument, um, we do have an all American marching band, as well as some smaller banded orchestras. We also have choirs on campus, whether you want to join the men's league club or the women's perduets. Um, we also have a lot of, you know, academic clubs, whether it's pre-law society or maybe you're looking uh, more to upkeep your sports. If you're currently a student athlete, we are a division one school, but for those that maybe aren't going to be playing at the D1 level, students can always join club sports or intramural sports as well. And then of course, we wanna talk about um, career preparedness, making sure that students are competitive for the job market once they graduate school. So at Purdue, we have what we call the CCO or the Career Center for Opportunities. And so essentially, this is gonna be your one-stop shop for anything job readiness. Um, you know, the, the advisors within the CCO will help you in getting your resume together. They do mock interviews, they'll do workshops. Um, and so if you need help in finding an internships or don't even know where to start that process, the CCO is gonna be a great place for you to um, get some guidance. We also have pre-professional advisors since we do see a lot of our students wanting to pursue professional programs after their bachelor degrees. So whether it's you know, med school, law school, dental school, you can meet with one of our pre-professional advisors to ensure that you are meeting the required courses that you need for your program when you are applying for one of those professional schools. Um, at Purdue, we are comprised of 11 different academic colleges and schools. Um, and within those, we do offer over 200 different majors. So of course, I don't have the time um, to go into detail about all 200 plus majors, but I can point out some of the more popular ones, or at least the ones that we get a lot of student interest from, starting with our College of Engineering. So we do have a top 10 engineering program in the country. Um, within that college, we offer engineering discipline engineering degrees in 17 different disciplines. Uh, but starting off, all freshmen actually come in into what we call the first year engineering program. And then it's not until your second semester freshman year when you actually get placed into your top engineering discipline. Um, we also have a direct admin nursing program within the College of Health and Human Sciences. So students actually get to start their clinical rotations as soon as their uh, sophomore year. 
our Clean Art School of Management is going to be our business school. So if you are looking to do anything in accounting, finance, marketing, we also just have we also just established a brand new uh, integrated business and engineering degree as well. So it does kind of, um, you know, allow you to collaborate between both the business and the engineering spaces. And then I'll close off with our Polytechnic Institute, which does house all of our technology majors, as well as our aviation majors. So we do have a top two professional flight program. Um, and we were actually the first university to have our own um, airport campus. So that's always something neat that I like to point out. I also want to take a little bit of time to talk about the evaluation process. If you're not familiar with Purdue, we do practice a holistic review approach. So we are going to take a variety of factors into consideration when looking at your application. Um, it's not any kind of required minimums when it comes to GPA and SAT or ACT score. So that's another thing I like to highlight. It is really going to be a holistic review of your academic profile as well as any extracurricular activities and other information that you provide within your application. Then lastly, I just want to close up with some dates um, and tuition fees. So just um, remember November 1 is really the biggest date of our early action deadline. So if you want to be considered for any merit-based scholarships, you'll want to apply by that date. And then these are just quickly our fees. Um, so, you know, if you're non-resident, that you would be looking at that middle column, which ends up being just under 40000 here. Yeah. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you everyone for giving us a lot more information about your respective institutions. I'm going to invite all my fellow panelists to come back to answer a question to give you guys a little more insight to their favorite things that they have on their campuses. The question we'll be answering is what is your favorite event or tradition on your campus? And we'll start with the University of Tampa. Awesome. So um, my favorite event um, or time on campus, at least, is uh, honestly, it's a it's a thing called Gasparilla. Um, it's kind of like a it's like the Tampa culture. Everyone dresses up like pirates, honestly. Um, and it's like a, a Tampa's own kind of Mardi Gras. There are music festivals, art festivals, um, live music events, parades. Um, it's a really interesting time and something that you will not experience in any other city. Harper College. So for me, the city of Boniante itself, we love holidays. So every single holiday, national or not, you can expect something going on in the city, which is just a two minute walk from campus. My favorite personal event is probably the senior showcase because that's that hard work that everybody gets to show off at the end of their three or four years with us. Um, just seeing all the different research that people have doing projects, you know, the next steps that they're gonna take. I love it every single year to see what's so different. Gettysburg College? Sure. My favorite tradition, I'm actually putting a video of it in the chat, Thanksgiving dinner. So it's been a tradition for many years on our campus where the faculty, faculty and staff feed the students a traditional Thanksgiving dinner. They start lining up. Uh, we cook over, oh, several hundred birds. The dining hall starts about 4 a.m. And it's an event with music, with lots of different um, things going on. And then all of the students get together for a traditional meal. And afterwards, the 120 volunteers, faculty, staff, et cetera, we get together for a Thanksgiving dinner afterwards as well. So it's a fun tradition, you can't miss it. Beloit College. It's, uh, of course, I'm sure all my colleagues sympathize that it's impossible to pick one. So I'll do two quickly. One is uh, a big folk and blues festival that we have in the fall that's student organized, but brings bands from all over the world to Beloit for a festival on campus, which is a blast. And one much smaller one is that three days a week at noon, we have pickup basketball that faculty, staff, and students play together, which is super fun. So if you like basketball, you don't have to be on a team, you don't have to do anything. You can get out of class and you and your professor can walk over to the gym together and get ready for an hour of basketball before you get your meal. Loyola? Um, I would say Loyola Palooza. It's our annual springtime festival about a week um, before finals. So it's a great way to just get together for music um, as well as good food. The second one I'll quickly mention is our BSA fashion show, Black Students Association fashion show, where not only students come out to celebrate Black culture um, as well as talent, um, but also our faculty members. And Purdue. 
Yeah, so I am a Purdue grad, so I would definitely say as a student, I definitely um, enjoyed attending our Grand Prix race, which is basically, um, if you're familiar with the Indy 500, it's a giant NASCAR race, and so Grand Prix is essentially a student-led race where they create their own go-karts and will race them on um, Grand Prix race weekend. Wonderful. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey and we would appreciate any feedback you can give us. This is also just one of many sessions happening today and tomorrow. So definitely go out there and sign up for more as well. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording at the same site where you registered. Again, thank you for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day.